Well, good morning, good morning, and as always, happy Friday to you. I am so grateful to be alive. I am so thankful that Jesus is Lord and he is still on the throne, that there are many obstacles and there are many challenges that are ahead of us. But you know what? We don't have to go anything alone. We don't have to do, we don't have to manage Hi Paula. We don't have to go through any difficulty by ourselves. We don't have to go through any hardship. God is with us. God is with us. A few days ago, I was actually doing a study and I, 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 I sometimes I read chapters, but one of my favorite ways to study the Bible is to do word studies. And so I, I was doing a word study on in him. And in you, and the all just reading through the scriptures with those two phrases, the you know Christ in you, the hope of glory, and that we are alive, that we are in Him, we are in God, we are His people. He He is our God, and we belong to Him. Well, a couple of days ago, I was uh, just doing some reading, and it occurred to me that everything we need is inside the blood of Jesus. And as we, good morning, why, uh, as we are looking at the challenges of our day and the difficulties that happen, um, the, the phrase that came to me was, it is very important that we, uh, that we have a working knowledge of the blood of Jesus, a working knowledge of working knowledge of the blood. And it reminded me of a uh, years ago, I would get, uh, I would get, uh, a, a book. It was a magazine from Kenneth Hagen Ministries. And in this magazine, they had something called Timeless Teachings. And I, I remembered a timeless teaching by Kenneth E. Hagen on the blood of Jesus. And so I'm going to go through that because it covers the core elements of the understand having a working knowledge of the blood of Jesus. Okay. Because everything happens in our lives. Everything moves everything. It is the blood of Jesus that makes everything work. It is the blood of Jesus that redeems. It is the blood of Je The blood is the, is the means by which God has bought us back and given us access to the kingdom. So whatever you are dealing with, whatever you're contending with, and even our access into the eternal realm where we get to have, we get to leave this earth, where we get to, when Jesus comes back to take his church away, it is by the blood that we, that we're able to do that. But most people don't understand all of the elements that the blood gives us. And what I loved about this article, this is an old article. I know I'm, I'm probably crazy. I'm probably not like a lot of people, but when I would get that magazine, I, the, 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 the teachings were so good and they were so rich. I would just take them out, take the art, take the teachings out. And I put them in a notebook and I actually have a notebook about that thick of some of the teachings. So when the Lord Lord spoke to me two days ago and said, you need to have a working knowledge of the blood of Jesus. You need to know when you say, I plead the blood, what does that mean? When you need to know that when, the, when you hear the phrase, we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, what does that mean? You need to know that, that when you call on the name of Jesus and you stand on the word in Isaiah, in 1 Peter, in Matthew, when you say Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, we are healed. You need to know what that that means you need to know have a working knowledge of what it means when Jesus says that to be a part of this kingdom that you have to drink his blood and eat his flesh you need to know what it means when you take communion and if we don't have that working knowledge and if we are not building up ourselves in our most holy faith when stuff comes at you there's not going to be enough of a spiritual infrastructure so that you can stand the scripture tells us in <clears throat> 
tells us that having done all to, 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 to stand, that we can stand therefore. But you need to know what you're standing on. What are you standing on? What are we standing? What are we standing against? What are we contending against? And what are the weapons of our warfare? The word, the word says that the, that the Lord has given us weapons so that we can stand. So I went back and I was just going back reading through these, uh, this teaching and it is so good. And I'm just going to go through his teaching. This is not my teaching. This is a Bible study by Kenneth e. Hagan, that is one of his timeless teachings, and it is the precious. It's called the precious blood of Jesus, and it's based on the scripture First Peter one eighteen through nineteen. It says, "For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations or your manner of life and conduct received by traditions from your fathers." But you were redeemed or you were bought back or we were purchased with the precious blood of Jesus as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So a lot of times when people read that phrase that we're coming, Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or blemish, they are assuming that you're coming back for a, a, a church that's perfect. What this scripture is talking about when he says he's coming back for a church without spot or blemish, he's saying he's coming back for a church that has effectively applied the blood of Jesus and a appropriated that blood. In other words, applying that blood to your life in a way so that you realize in your heart, in your head, in your mind, in your life that <clears throat> that Jesus died for you and that it is the finished work of the cross. That's what eliminates the spots, the, 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 as of a lamb without spot or blemish. That's what eliminates the spots and the blemishes because we realize that we're going to make mistakes. And what's important, you know, what's really fascinating um, that people need to understand. One of the first elements of the blood is that it cleanses us because when the, what the enemy does is if he can get you in a state of guilt, if he can get you in a state of blame, if he can get you in a state of self-condemnation, then he can stop you from applying the blood, which cleanses us. And so the first element of the blood of Jesus is I want to talk about is its cleansing power. The blood will cleanse you because everybody's going to make mistakes. We are all going to have issues in our life that we, that, that we, that we mess up from. And so it's really important so that the body, so, so the first thing you need to know is the blood of Jesus will cleanse you. So when you accept Jesus as your Lord, when you come into the kingdom of God and we repent of our sins and we say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe that your blood, that you died, when you died for me, you took on my sins. Sin is not an act. Sin is a condition. It is a condition that was brought on humanity by our father, Adam. And Jesus came to bring us back into access with God, our heavenly father. What Adam did was, was understand. Thank you, Ted. And no, this is a clear cell. It is truly a salvation message because it all begins with the blood of Jesus. And so when when Adam sinned, he created an atmosphere that separated us from our father, that prevented us from getting into the presence of God. And when Jesus, so, but God knew that we, Adam was going to sin. And so what he did was he engineered a circum, a situation whereby we would be purchased and bought back from and pay for our penalty of sin to be paid by the blood of Jesus. First John 1 and 7 says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us from sin. So first of all, it's really important that people need to know that passage was written to the kingdom. It was written to the body of Christ because it says, if we walk in the light to be in the light, it means that you have to already be born again. So Jesus, this, this, this passage was written with the assumption that you're going to mess up, that you're going to make mistakes, that we're going to fail, that we're going to come short. But the word of God says that first John, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus, his son cleanses us. So you go back to the blood when you blow it, when you mess up, when you fail, when you, when you trip, when you, um, 
When you find yourself having, you just can't seem to get it together. It is the blood of Jesus that gets you back on track. And so what you do is you go to the scriptures. And the word says that if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So you just confess your sins over and over again. You keep doing it. Now, again, that, that is not an invitation to live a lifestyle of sin, but that is understand and that is the understanding that you're going to make mistakes and we're going to fail. And the whole, as my Bishop Kenneth Alma used to say, I love this phrase. He says, it's the under, the blood of Jesus helps you understand that you're not going to ever really be sinless. You, well, there, there will be a time when we can be, we can operate and be sinless. Okay. But the blood of Jesus comes to help you sin less and less and less because as you appropriate that blood, it cleanses you, it washes you, it removes the sin. It takes care of it. And then it gives you access so that you can now come boldly before the throne of grace where you may find help in your time of need. So that now whatever is going on, I remember years ago, I had a dear friend who had had a drug addiction. And she was a worship leader and we were very close. We were very, very good friends. And, and, and there were times throughout her life where she would, where she, where she fell. In other words, she went back into, she stumbled back into that lifestyle. But every time she would go back and apply the blood with, with tears and weeping, she would apply the blood and God would take it, cleanse her and put her right back on track as if she never missed a beat. And that's what God wants you to understand. The blood will do that. It will do that for you. So one of the first things you need to understand is that the blood will cleanse you. It will wash your sins away. And then the next thing I want is important to understand is that the blood reconciles you. The blood of Jesus is precious because it will reconcile you. In Ephesians 2:13 it says, "But now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes far off are made nigh or near by the blood of Jesus." So now it's important when he says reconcile, that means he brings you close. See, the enemy wants you to think that when things are going on, that God is far off, that he is way away. But the scriptures say that the word of God is not the, it is near the kingdom. Of, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here. It is within reach. It is within grasp. And when he says we've been reconciled so that we have been brought near, that means no matter what's going on, that means I don't care if I don't care what the happens in the white house. I know that according to this scriptures, this reconciled passage in Ephesians, 213 I know that God is near unto me that we that sometimes we who are far off we are made near by the blood it is the blood of Jesus that gives me access to God and it's the blood of Jesus that allows me to come boldly before the throne of grace where I can get help. So whatever I need help in, with, if I need help with my finances, it is the blood of Jesus that gives me permission, that gives me right, that gives me access to come before the throne of grace. It is the blood of Jesus that gives me the capacity, the strength, the opportunity to come boldly. To come nigh unto God. We are made near by the blood of Jesus. So we know the blood will cleanse you. The blood will wash you. The blood will remove your sin. The blood gives you permission to be forgiven. And let me tell you, this is for somebody right now. You've been tripping. You've been feeling guilty. And you got some issues going on in your life right now. And you've been hesitant to go to God and ask for help. Because you say, Lord, I, I messed up again. Lord, I blew it again. And I'm telling you right now, I don't care how many times times you blow it. I don't care how many times you mess up. It says the righteous fall, the righteous fall again. But what you do is every time, all you need to do is get up one more time than when you fail. So you go back to God again and again and say, God, I'm sorry again. Lord, help me again. And you, what you will find is that if you continually come back to him, he is all, his hand is stretched out still. He's waiting with, he's waiting for you right now. He will never leave you. He will never, he will never forsake you. He will cleanse you over and over again. Do not be afraid to ask him for help. Do not be afraid to call upon the name of Jesus. Do not be afraid. Don't think that you, your mistakes are too bad that he won't forgive you again. Yes, he will. He'll forgive you again and again and again and again and again because he is that kind of God. He is that kind of father. 
He is that kind of savior. He is that kind of redeemer. He is that kind of Lord. So the blood will cleanse you. The blood will reconcile you and make it possible for you to come near to God. But then here's another thing. The blood will embolden you. It will give you a boldness and a courage and a confidence. The blood of Jesus Christ is also precious because of it. It is, it is its emboldening power. Let's examine Hebrews 10, 19, which says, having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest of holy by the blood of Jesus. You see, when you, when you keep coming back, the enemy wants you to feel like you can't come. You can't come before God. You, you're not good enough. What he's saying is we get to come boldly before the throne. In other words, it is the blood that gives you the courage, that gives you the confidence, that gives you the sense of self-awareness and Christ awareness in you. See, it's important for you to know who you are are in Christ, but it's also important for you to know who Christ is in you. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And it is the blood of Jesus that gives us access to Christ being deposited in you. It's the work of the cross. And so when he says you're in the emboldening power, that's Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. No, we don't come by our own name. We don't come in our own righteousness. And I don't care how much good works you do. I don't care how faithful you are to your church. And I don't care how grand you are in your stand. It is the blood of Jesus. We still have to come by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so it's really important. You don't need to go around feeling guilty because if you are experiencing that sense of guilt, if you are experiencing that sense of, 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 of of, of blame, of feeling like you can't make it is because you have not enlarged the blood of Jesus and magnified the blood in our, in your life. Okay. So we know the blood will cleanse you. We know the blood will reconcile you. We know the blood will embolden you. But then here's the other thing is that the blood will help you overcome because that stuff that you're dealing with, that you're struggling with, you need to understand that the blood will help you overcome. The blood of Jesus is precious because of its overcoming power. Revelations 12, 11 says, and they believers overcame him by overcame who, who did you overcome? We overcome the devil. We overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony is another way of saying your right confession. In other words, when you say, he says, now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let you take the, take the word of God and put it on you, put it on your lips, put it in your mouth. And when you are saying that word and you are speaking that word, when the enemy comes in and tells you, no, God's not going to come through. He's lying. He's a liar. He knows not, he, that's, it is his nature. He is the father of lies. That's all he knows to do. So when he will lie, when he lies, we have to choose not to believe leave a lie and we have to choose to take the truth of the word and put it in our mouth, put it on your lips because you overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word that you testify. And you guys have heard me say, hi, Crystal. You've heard me say often that it is the word of God in your mouth that the angels are standing there waiting for you to say something that brings your words into agreement and into confession and into alignment with what has already been spoken. So if the enemy says God's not going to come through, if the enemy says you're not going to make it, if the enemy says you're going to fail, then you have to determine right then and there what are, okay, what am I going to, but whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe the report of the Lord and decree the word of God in, in the face of the devil? Are you going to say, take this devil? Are you going to take that word like Jesus did and say it is written and use the word of your testimony along with the blood of the lamb as a tool to overcome the enemy? Because that's what we're going to have to do to overcome, to overcome. <laughs> So the blood will cleanse you. The blood reconciles you. The blood emboldens you, but the blood also helps you overcome. It helps you overcome. Hallelujah. It helps you overcome. Now what's the next one? We also realize that the blood will redeem you. In other words, it purchases you. The word redeem. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That's Hebrew nine, Hebrews nine 22. And that's, um, and, uh, hang on, 
Uh, Acts 20, 28 says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. So the word redeem means to buy. In other words, you were, you were at some point, we humanity were stolen. We, we were sold into slavery. We were, we were enslaved by Satan. And Jesus' blood purchases us. It is, the, it, is, it is the tool by which our sins are remitted. And so we see in the scriptures in Acts 20, 28, that take heed therefore unto all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. So Jesus redeemed us. He bought you. He purchases us. He, he, he gives us access. He get, he, it is his blood that brings us back into covenant with God. So we see that the blood will cleanse you. We see that the blood redeems you. We see that the blood emboldens you. We see that the blood reconciles you. We see that the blood helps you overcome. So here's the next one. Pray. Oh, this is so good. It's exciting. I'm getting excited myself. Here's the next one. The blood, will, the pacifying power of the blood. The blood of Jesus is precious because of its redeeming and cleansing power, but it's also precious because of its pacifying power. Now, what do we mean by pacifying? Colossians 1 20 says, and having made peace with God, made peace, having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him. I say, whether they whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. You see, the pacifying power is where he makes peace. He resolves things. He brings a state of disagreement and disorder to peace and brings it into alignment. So first, the blood of Christ pacifies the broken law. It was the law that we couldn't live up to. No matter how good you were, you could not measure up to the law. We all sin and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Through the blood of Jesus, God has made peace. He's reconciled all things to himself. So what we could not do, God did it. And he did it by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is multi-purpose. It does a whole lot of things all at once. Second, the blood of Christ pacifies the guilty conscience. One reason many Christians go around feeling so guilty is because they've not magnified the blood of Jesus as they need to. If we only knew about the power of the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, we wouldn't have to be guilty. You wouldn't have to be tripping. You wouldn't have to be feeling like every time I sin, oh God, every time I stumble, every time I come up short, I'm weak. I, I'll never make it. I'll never get up. That's a lie from hell to death devil is a lie. So we see the blood cleanses you. The blood reconciles you. The blood emboldens you. It redeems you. It helps you overcome. And here's one more. It says that the blood is a song inspiring power. The blood of Jesus is precious because of its song inspiring power. I love this because y'all know how much I love music. Revelations 5, 9 says, and they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the book and to open the seals. Therefore, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And so this song that we can sing is a song that represents the access we have been given back to the Father. This salvation story, this redemption story, this walk that with, with God, that even the angels look at and go, oh, we wish we could, we could. What is that? What is this access? Because we, because of the blood, we have been brought into fellowship and relationship with the Father. It is the blood of Jesus. And so I encourage you. In fact, I wish I had brought a communion element. I would take communion right here on this call. I, I challenge you today and every day that you just get, a, just get a communion cup. Just order you some. And then daily take communion to remind yourself of the power of the blood of Jesus. To remind yourself that you don't have to go around feeling 
trippy and dirty and, and unclean and like a failure and, and as if you are a, a, unable to get with God because you're just not good enough. It's a lie from hell because it is the blood of Jesus that will cleanse you. First Peter 1 Peter 18 through 19. For as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, but you were redeemed by the with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without spot and without blemish. Okay, Jesus is coming back for a church without spot and blemish, not because we can go and do everything in a way to make ourselves perfect. It is his blood that makes us without spot. It is his blood that makes us without blemish. It is the appropriation of this blood and applying it to your life regularly and taking that communion element and remembering that as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of the blood. And then it is taking that blood and allowing that blood to continually manifest who you are in Christ and then revealing to you at ever enlarging levels of who Christ in you. For it is Christ in you, the hope of glory. In other words, the only hope that other people have, that they have met, it will be the glory of God, the glory of Christ being revealed in you. You need Jesus and you need the blood. And there is no access to the Father apart from that blood. I heard a, a sermon the other day that says that, you know, that many Christians doubt that there is a, they, they don't believe that there is a, that, that Jesus is the only way to the father. Let me tell you how that works. Okay. I agree with the word of God that says no man cometh unto the father, but by him. But I also believe that there are many religions that will eventually lead you to the feet of the cross. That I believe that at its core, that any truth of in any other religion, I don't care who, if there is any seed of truth, Jesus, the truth of that word will ultimately lead you to Christ. So whether you get through Christ through any other means, that's fine. If you need to go, if you need to go to him through Buddha, fine. You go through Buddha, discover any truth that you find in Buddha. Because let me tell you, there is a, there is a seed of truth in every deception. And any, but that, but Jesus says that, that his word is truth. And so any truth that you find in any other religion will ultimately lead you to the ultimate truth. Who is Jesus? Jesus says, I am the way I am the truth and I am the life. So in, there's a lot of truth in other religions. There's some truth in there. And I believe that that truth will lead you to the truth. And so rather than argue about a beacon, well, you know, no man, yeah, the word says no man cometh unto the father, but by Jesus, I decree that the, that the truth in every other religion is leading people to the truth of Jesus, that any truth in Buddha, any truth in Krishna, any truth in Islam, any truth in any other ideology, wherever there is a seed of truth, the seed of that truth will lead you to the ultimate truth, who is Jesus Christ. So don't get bogged down worrying about that, worrying about, well, you know, you can't come to Jesus except you can't come to Jesus through Islam. Let me tell you something. You can't, you may not get to God through Islam, but you can get to Jesus through Islam. You may not get to, you may not be able to get to God through Krishna, but you can get to Jesus through Krishna. Any truth in any religion will lead you to the ultimate truth, who is Christ, will lead you to the ultimate truth. John 17, 17 says, thy word is truth. Who is the word? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So for those individuals who are in other religions, I challenge you, look at the truth and just, oh, I dare, in fact, I dare you to say, Jesus, if you are the truth, the ultimate truth. Reveal yourself to me and show me the truth of who you are and what I'm coming out of. And he'll do it. He is just that bold. He is just that good. And he is just that faithful. He is just that much. He is that much love. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. So if you need cleansing, 
apply the blood. So now when you say, I plead the blood of Jesus over my circumstances, what you are saying is it is the blood that has bought back your life over your situation. And so now it is the blood that separates, it cleanses, it washes, it removes, and it doesn't, it, the, blood, the blood just doesn't, it doesn't just, it doesn't just, oh, corre separe ki tanto rodosa la garia masaraka, oh, lo corre bes inteshila. It is the blood that gives you access to the Father. And so we're to, again, I want I always want to give credit to what credit is due. This, this, this teaching, I, the other day, the Lord spoke to us, spoke to me and said, Holy Spirit said, you must have a working knowledge of the blood. He says, you must have a working knowledge of the blood of Jesus in your life in this hour. Why? Because the, the COVID pandemic, the COVID was just the first thing. Okay. It was the first thing. But let me tell you that the spike protein is nothing against the blood of Jesus. So if you, for those people who've, who've taken the, there's a, there's a whole issue right now with people with what they call vaccine back, back remorse. Well, let me tell you, if you're feeling remorse and you're concerned, just apply the blood. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all unright. It'll cleanse, it'll wash, it'll heal. It will deliver. All you have to do is apply it. And see, that's why the enemy wants people to stay in fear, because if he can keep you in fear, he can keep you in a mindset that won't, that will, that will keep you from, from applying the blood. The blood is only as valuable as is your willingness to apply it to your life. You have to apply it. You have to appropriate it. You have to put it in the spot where it's needed. You have to put it in the spot where it's where where it where it can do the do do its okoresente. It can do its work. And yes, Miss Paula, you can be in bondage to fear because what people want to understand is fear is to Satan what faith is to God. And everything happens by faith. And also the blood of Jesus speaks for us in the course of hell. Oh, thank you, Renee. Oh, yes, the blood speaks. Yes, the blood testifies. It goes in. Mm, well, oh, if you remember, thank you, Renee, for bringing this to my heart, to my mind, my thoughts. When, if you remember when the story of Job, when Job, when the enemy, when Satan went into the courts to accuse Job, that uh, the only one missing in the court was Job. Job was not there to testify for himself because there was no blood that had been applied so that the blood could speak on Job's behalf. But Jesus' blood speaks for us in the courts. Hallelujah. And it speaks and testifies. And so we don't have to defend ourselves in the in the courts anymore all we have to do is show up you show up in the courtroom and you let the blood of Jesus testify you say yes I'm guilty as charged hallelujah but I apply the blood of Jesus and it takes care and that's why the accuser of the brethren loses his power of accusation that's why the accuser of the blood brethren loses his strength of his case that's why he will lose every case every time Time because the blood speaks. Oh, thank you so much. Hallelujah. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. So yes, that's good. You know, we taught that old, that old saying, Jesus is a lawyer in the courtroom. Yes, he is. He is a lawyer in the courts on earth, but oh, praise God. He is a lawyer in the courts of heaven. So understand the power of the blood. So I want to challenge you that these script, these passages is just a start. It's just to get you thinking. And as the Lord spoke to me and said, you need to have a working knowledge of the power of the blood of Jesus in your life. What does, so what does that mean? Number one, so you got somebody type these questions to have a working knowledge. What does it mean to have a working knowledge? Number one, it means you need to understand what the blood of Jesus does in your life. So what does it when so when when that last one is especially important right now because there are many accusations being made against every person, every believer. The enemy is and he is using your history, your bloodline, your failures, your shortcomings in the courts of heaven against you to prevent you from stepping into your divine assignment, to prevent you from gaining 
gaining access to what was written in the scrolls, to what was written in the books. But Jesus wants you to know that the blood he paid, the blood he shed for you was sufficient to give you access so that now you can come boldly, you can go, you can enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. You can enter his courts with praise on your lips. You can, do, just like the woman who went before the unjust judge, you can go before the throne. You can go before the courts. You have that access. You have been given access. And it is the blood that gives you access. And yes, Miss Beverly, you have to use the blood. If you use it, it works. You don't let the blood go, uh, go in vain. You don't, you don't let it, let the, let the price that he paid go un, you don't, you don't, you don't let it go unused. You apply it. You exercise it. You need to know what the blood. So the first thing is you need to know what the blood does. You need to know how the blood influences is your ability to be healthy, to not just get well when sickness attacks, but to live and walk in divine health. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, one of the reasons this, this, this stands out is for the last several days, the enemy had attacked my voice with this hideous cough. And I'm like, devil, you're a lie. You're a lie. And then the enemy said, well, you know, you can go over to the, go over to the clinic and, and then just get a shot and they'll give you some antibiotics. I see. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. But I can also go to the blood. I can also go get the communion. And I can also apply the communion elements because he was wounded for my transgressions and his stripes bore my healing. And, by, and, and that blood that he shed, it was for me. It was for my healing. So now what, I, so what, I, what it provoked me to do was, you know what? I, you know, if I need to go to, go to the clinic and, and do that, that's one thing. But I'm doing this first. I'm going to stand on this word first. Why? Because I need to have a working knowledge. I need to remember what God did. I remember the first time God healed me on my faith when I was about 12 years old. And it was the same thing. The enemy has consistently over my lifetime attacked my lungs, my throat, my tonsils. He, oh, as a child, I was constantly having issues with my breathing. Why? Because that was a part of my destiny. He knew that a part of my destiny, a part of my assignment in life was using this voice, using his throat, using my song, my singing. And so he would attack that. He attacks where your destiny lies. That's his, that's his MO. And so the first time my mother told me, my, my mother used to pray. My parents always pray. I remember the first time I wanted, I remember I was probably about six years old when my dad took me to church and an old evangelist laid hands on me and, and I was healed. But then when I was about 12 years old, my mother told me, she said, you know, you're old enough to pray for yourself. I want you to pray for you. You pray, pray for yourself. And I remember applying the word, getting the word and applying myself. I had a fever and I laid down and I just said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. When I, and I just sort of said, when I wake up, I thank you. And when I woke up, the fever was broken. I was fine. I was healed. I was well. And then over the course of my life, that taught me to apply the word, to decree the healing, to apply appropriate. Why? Because you're going to have the enemy, his MO is he'll keep coming. He'll keep coming with things. He'll keep coming with challenges. He'll keep coming. And then about, about 10 years ago, the enemy, uh, the enemy attacked my voice. And for years I would lose my voice when I would speak, when I would sing, I would lose my voice for weeks at a time. And then not long ago, and then I began to stand and contend against that. I said, no, we're breaking this thing. Now, it took several years to get to where when I would see the symptoms, I was like, no, we're not bowing to that. And I would stand, and then it got the enemy's ability to bring that, to that, that opposition got shorter and shorter. So recently, when I had to sing and I went in an amazing event, I get back and the enemy attacks my voice with this cough. And I'm like, no. No, no. So what do we do? We get the word. We stand on the word. You must have a working knowledge. And the way you get a working knowledge is you have to apply it. If you apply it in the small circumstances before they blow up into big deals, then you train yourself to stand on the word as the first course of action and not as a last resort. Oh, yes. Draw from the blood bank. I like that, Miss Beverly. Hallelujah. Go to the blood bank of the cross. Oh, hallelujah. Well, that's it. 
So praise the Lord. I just, I just, again, I want to give credit. This, this, the notes that I came today came from a study that I went to my notes. I remembered this article from years ago, the precious blood of Jesus from the timeless teachings of Kenneth E. Hagin. And then I want to say thanks to Renee for that um, reminder about the blood of Jesus being applied in the courts. Now that's not all. That's not all. It's more to it. It's a whole lot more to it than what we talked about, but that's a starting place. So I want to challenge you to go ahead and get in your Bible and just do a study on the blood of Jesus to increase your working knowledge. Okay. Well, a few announcements before I go. I want to let everybody know so we have we have uh, I have posted inside the network our November events. We will have a three part study on the dreams and dream interpretation in the month of November. It'll be November 14th, 21st, and 28th. And on the 28th of November, we will have Cindy McGill. Now, this is not just for you to bring your dreams for Cindy to interpret. No, we're going to, first session, we're going to go through Cindy's books, what your dreams are telling you. I'm looking to see if it's on my shelf. No, it's on my shelf upstairs because I've been, I've been reading it. So we're going to go through the her first book, What Your Dreams Are Telling You. And then on the, um, on the 21st, we're going to go through her book, Words That Work. It's about the language that we speak to win the loss. Because our goal is not just to have somebody interpret our dreams, but it is to activate an anointing for you to interpret the dreams of others. That's what we're endeavoring to do. Now, there's no way we can cover two whole books, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at the key points in each of those books. We're going to study them. So you need to go out. You can go into the, to the network and then I'll post it inside the circle on Facebook. I'll post it inside the circle on Facebook today and you can sign up the, you need to order the books. The links is there for you to order those books. You can get them both for about $30. Uh, you have to have the books to attend this class. You, it doesn't matter what version you get. You can get the Kindle version, which is less. If you like, I like hard copies, but I also like Kindle version. So get the Kindle. So do that. Whatever works for you, get it, but be honorable and order the books, download them as Kindle or order the books online from her website. I posted her website in the links. Then there is a, uh, I always, whenever I invite somebody, I like to give them something. So we do have, it's, there's a suggested donation of $35. It's three classes. Well, I, that's a suggested donation. You don't have to do that, but you, here's what I always tell you guys. Y'all know, I tell you, ask the Holy Spirit what you should give and whatever he tells you to do, do that. Okay. Ask him what you should do and whatever he tells you to do, do that. Okay. Praise the Lord. And so I'm excited about that. In fact, I even had another, had a dream myself. It's, it's not real common over the course of my life that I have, have, have a lot of dreams. I've never had a frequent number of dreams, but I am noticing that my, the dreams that my dream life is increasing. And so I just praise the Lord for that. And now, uh, oh yes, that's, thank you, Miss Paula. Uh, sow where you eat and plant where it's growing. If the insight you're getting, oh, thank you for reminding me of something. The, one other thing the Holy Spirit told me to do, and I believe that when he tells me to do something, I encourage other people that it, it works, okay? But one of the things the Lord told me to do in this hour, going into 2022, you need to have some strategic alliances and some communities in place. And, and, and so in doing that, I, I've, I've joined another community because I, of course, I'm still with Patricia King. Absolutely. I'm still with Clarice Fluid. Absolutely. But I actually became a part of another community, an online community, uh, the, uh, OFBA, our father's business Alliance, which is with Heather Rayner. And she, uh, works with Ian Clayton because as things are accelerating, 
You want to make sure that you are in streams that are producing insight, bringing and manifesting insight for where the kingdom is going right now. It's not about church right now. It's about kingdom. And so your ability to operate in the kingdom will hinge on your capacity to, to, to hear what God is saying to you. But then what you will find is that what you, you will hear what he's saying to you and it will be echoed in the streams that you have been partnered with. Let me say that again. God will speak to you because it's important for you to have your ongoing personal relationship with God. But then you will hear it echoed in the streams that God is speaking through. And there are specific streams. And this a lot of the teaching that's coming, it's not like that. You know, it's not about a hoop and a holler anymore. A hoop and a holler will land you in hell. I'm just telling you, a hoop and a holler will land you in hell because there is no insight. There's no revelation. It's all emotion-based. Uh, yeah, getting people hype. And I, ain't, I don't care about no hype. I don't care about no hoop. What I want to know is... Is does the insight you're releasing bring me into alignment with the kingdom of God and prepare me to be one of those, those virgins that has oil in my lamp? Does what you are teaching, talking about, it is put oil, which is the oil is fuel. And the lamp determines your sight. Thy word is a lamp unto a, my feet and a light unto my path. So if the insight you're teaching is not providing light to my path and providing fuel for my passion for my Savior, making me hungry for knowledge, hungry for, te to, for to know Jesus, hungry to study, hungry to get in the word. If it's not, if it's not doing that, you need to get the hell out of there. I'm saying it like I heard it. Get out of there and go find you a place where the word and the gospel is being teached, taught in a way that will equip you to stand. Because things are not going to get easier. But what is going to happen is that the anointing is intensifying. I'm sensing it on my life. My only is getting stronger. It's getting more bold. It's getting more courageous. And it's equipping. And what's going to happen is as it continues to intensify, you're going to start walking. Walking out on the street, people of believers are going to start walking into hospital. And as they walk down the hall, people are going to get up out of the hospital beds healed. Because if the shadow of Peter healed people, don't think that that was the beginning. We are at the end of the race. That was at when Okorosete, that was at the beginning of the race. We're at the end of the race. Do you honestly think that there's going to be a level of anointing greater at the beginning when the gospel first fell and the Holy Ghost first came? That there's going to be an anointing greater then than is at the end when we are finishing the race and we have harder, deeper, worse, more evil opposition? I don't think so. And so if you want to be a believer who walks at that level, who the presence of God on you and the anointing of God on you and the glory of God on you is enough to convict people of their sin. So then it'll be like Charles Finney stepping on a train or, or, or stepping on a, in an atmosphere. And then the people all of a sudden say, there's something on you. I just don't understand what it is, but I feel like I need to get saved. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm done trying to tell people about Jesus who don't want to hear. I'm through with that. Let the glory of God and the anointing of the most holy God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost be so strong that it will convict them of their sins. And if it don't convict them of their sins, they don't want to be saved. I ain't got time for folk who don't want to be saved. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, if you want to step, so thank you, Miss Paula. So if you want to step into that kind of anointing, if you want to step, you need to get into alignment. And now I also want to tell you guys, I'm, I've, I've got, I'm getting some help. God is sending me some help because I just, some stuff, I just say, oh, Lord, I, I, I can't do it all. OK, and so we are we will be launching and uh, going the membership elements of the the Kyle circle in the network. We'll be we'll be launching that uh, in December. We have the the three nights. It's three Sunday nights at seven o'clock central, six o'clock eastern. We have those three Sunday nights. 
okay, coming up in the month of November. And this is not about you getting your dreams interpreted, but I want you to bring your dreams. In fact, go into the network now and you can post your dreams under Dream Readers. And what we're going to do, we're going to use her, her tools and together we're going to come up with, some, we're going to say, well, let's see what this dream means. Let's see what the Holy Spirit shows us. And then when she, when, when Cindy McGill gets on with us on the 28th of November, when she's on, we're going to go and say, this is what the Holy Spirit has showed us based on what you told us and taught us in your writings. And that's how, cause I don't want to, I don't want somebody doing stuff for me. I want to learn myself. I want to be a bat. When I stand before Jesus, I want to be able to say, Jesus, I learned this just, I, 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 this is, these are the, this is the fruit I gained by learning something specific for your kingdom. And these are the people who are in the kingdom because of this insight that I learned. I didn't have somebody do, I want somebody else doing everything for me. No, I want to learn how to apply these principles and get my own oil. Thank you, Ms. Paula. I think that's a good note to finish on. Get my own, get your own oil. Stop expecting everybody to pray you out of your issues. Get your own oil. Come over here and learn how to pray for yourself. Learn how to stand. In fact, I was recently challenged by Pam. Pam, and in fact, there she is, Pam Thompson, and she was saying, "Stella, you need to teach people how to step into." It. And so I believe that uh, even doing these, uh, get your fill your horn and get your own oil. That's right. And so it's about equipping you. I'm, 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 I'm done doing stuff for folk. Uh, no, no, I ain't praying for your mom and them. I'll, I'll teach you how to pray for your mom and them yourself. I'll help you overcome. But at the end of the day, the goal is to equip you so that you can then become a fortress, a, 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 an anchor in the kingdom. And you become a virgin who gets her own oil, who gets his own oil. Go get your own oil. Just saying. <sighs> I'm done. I want to say thank you guys so much. You guys, please go uh, into the network and sign up. Now, remember, this is an Eventbrite class, so you can donate on Eventbrite. You can sign up and say you're going in the network, but you do need to go to Eventbrite because that's where your registration link. This is a this is a class. And again, I'm not telling. I didn't. I told you a recommended donation, but you ask Holy Spirit what you should give, and whatever He tells you to do, do that because we want to let Cindy know we appreciate her coming and spending time with us in this in the circle amen as they say in church amen hey love you guys mm, thank you Paula thank you Gloria thank you Pam thanks Kathy thanks Beverly thank you who else is on here thank oh wow uh let's see uh I can't you know I don't have my glasses on but anyway you guys want to thank all of you for being on here with me I appreciate you and until next time you make it a terrific day. Bye-bye.